Good evening, folks. Welcome to today's video uh, on this Wednesday. Um, appreciate you tuning in for our video. Uh, it's a very exciting time in our tournament. As you know, we are down now to only five videos remaining. So after today, there will only be four more. Uh, if my number is correct, uh, next Friday will be the championship video. So as you know, we're looking for the most inspirational background character of the Bible. Okay, we've been looking at all these people that appear only in the background in the Bible. And uh, as you know, uh, just like in a movie, we've said this before, you have your main characters and your background characters. So that's what we're looking at. And uh, we've narrowed it down now. We had eight people remaining here in the second round, but we learned that uh, Epaphroditus from the book of Philippians has advanced to the final four. And I want to update you on Monday's video. We had Justice and Aquila, one of the hardest to vote yet. But I do have the results of that. And here they are. We have... With 67% of the vote, we have Justice winning and Aquila only 33%. So that may be looked at as a surprise victory, but we have now Justice has advanced to the final four. So just to put that in perspective, folks, in the third round, We'll have a video that has Epaphroditus and Justice, and the winner of that will go to the championship. But now today we're going to look at two more people, as you can see right here. We have it ready. Over here we have Simon of Cyrene, the man that helped Jesus carry the cross, and Simon, the brother of Jesus. So we're going to go ahead and begin. The winner of this will also advance to the final four. So here we go. We're going to start today with Simon of Cyrene. As you know, we're looking at four things here. The personality. What was his personality? His comparison. Who does he compare to in the Bible? What might his future have been after his story ends in the Bible? And what verse in the Bible best reminds us of him? Okay, so that's what we're going to look at, and let's go ahead and begin. Okay, so just to remind you, as I always say, you can go back to the round one video if you want to hear his full story. But let me just remind you a couple things about him. We know that this man was in Jerusalem the day of Jesus' crucifixion. He was there because it was the time of the Passover. He was there celebrating, and, uh, and we believe that he was there, and he wasn't necessarily a follower of Jesus, but he happened to be there as Jesus came walking by, holding the cross, going to Mount Calvary, and they commanded him to help Jesus. So, folks, I don't believe he just jumped out and and wanted to help, I think he was made to help, but this moment changed his life. We, we understand that this man became a, a Christian. He became a great follower of Christ. We know that he, uh, my opinion is he probably accepted Jesus as his Savior. Probably that day, that day, that moment had such an impact on him, he came, became a believer in Christ, or probably just shortly after. But we know that he went home. Obviously, he led his family to Christ because we're told he had a couple of famous sons uh, and, and a very spiritual wife as well. And also, we know that his city, Cyrene, became a, a big hot spot for Christianity. It probably is because this man was the first one to be a believer in Christ. He went back to Cyrene 
The book of Acts tells us that that city had some of the first Christians, probably because this man went back to a city, had a story to tell about Jesus and the crucifixion, and he evangelized the city. And we know that he also died of a martyrdom. He was killed for his faith just the same way Jesus was by crucifixion. So what is his personality? Well, folks, I've come up with a word, and I must explain, because the word that I'm going to put on this board might confuse some, okay? I'm going to write the word passionate, okay? I'm going to write the word passionate. But please understand that I'm not meaning, when I say passionate, that he had a very fiery personality. You know, uh, that he was very bold and very strict. That's not what I mean. When I say passionate, I see in him a man who was literally uh, just so devoted to the Lord that he got busy. I mean, folks, as I just explained, he obviously went back to his home city, evangelized them, and he did this very quickly because in the book of Acts chapter 2, that city had a bunch of Christians. So I believe he just got fired up for God. He was passionate about sharing the message of Jesus to me. That seems like his personality, okay? Now, who does he compare to? Well, some people may disagree with me on this, but I see a comparison, and I'm not kidding when I put this, but I see a comparison to the Apostle Paul. Now, how in the world do I see that? Well, I got about three reasons why I think this man compares to Paul. Now, folks, he, he didn't do the missionary journeys like Paul and, and stuff like that. But I, I see a comparison because, for one thing, Simon of Cyrene seems to have accepted Jesus very quickly when he met him. When he met Jesus that day... As I said, I think he got saved probably later that day or the next day, very soon. And folks, we know that Paul was blinded by God on the road to Damascus, and he quickly accepted Jesus as his Savior. Also, I, I just have a feeling in my heart that Simon of Cyrene probably felt unworthy to have helped Jesus carry the cross. Folks, this was one of the most major moments in Christianity, and this man had a big part in it. He got to help the Lord carry the cross. I think Simon of Cyrene probably looked back on that day his whole life and said, you know what, I wasn't worthy of that. You know, it reminds me of Paul. Paul didn't feel worthy because he was a persecutor of the church before he got saved. Paul even said, I am least of all the apostles. He said, I am the chief of sinners. So I see some resemblance there. And also both these men were very hard workers for the Lord. Did a lot of evangelizing, preaching. So that's what I see. Now, what might his future have been? Well, folks, as always, we don't know the specific answer, but... As I've already said, it does look like he become a believer in Christ, quickly went back to his city, even though we don't see this in the scripture. But obviously he went back and he won his city, which was the city of Cyrene, to Jesus. And obviously... He led his family to Christ. Please remember, they weren't followers of Christ at the beginning there on the day of the crucifixion, but he wound up raising two godly sons. One of them we've already seen in this tournament. His name was Rufus. So what was his future? Well, I think his future was... Uh, I'm going to use the word evangelize which basically means 
to win for Christ. I believe he evangelized his city and family. Okay? And there is some Bible proof, as we've said of this. Okay? Evangelized. He reached his city and his family for the Lord. And what verse is there in the Bible that reminds us a lot of him? Well, when I think of Simon of Cyrene, I think about how he got so busy for the Lord so quickly. Once he got home, boy, he had a story to tell about the crucifixion of the Son of God. It makes me think of the verse that Jesus said. Jesus said, do not say there are four months and then comes harvest. He said, lift up your eyes. The harvest is, he said, the fields are ready to harvest. In other words, Jesus was telling us, don't waste time. Get busy in, in doing things for God. So folks, I think that sums up Simon of Simony because that's exactly what he did. He got busy for God. That verse is John 4.35. So there we go. That is the story of Simon of Cyrene. I've done the best that I can. Now I want to move our attention to our second person today. This is Simon, the brother of Jesus. We have two Simons today in one video. If you'll notice, he is ranked number three in this tournament, folks. Now that doesn't mean much. That just means that was his position we started him in at the beginning of the tournament. But he has a great story. So let's look at him. Now, I want to remind you that Jesus had at least four brothers. Two of them are very famous, James and Jude. They even wrote New Testament books. But he had two little brothers, the younger one, Simon, and a littlest brother named Joseph, probably named after their dad, the carpenter. We don't know as much about these brothers, but we've uncovered a little bit. You can go back to the round one video and learn about it. We learned that all of the brothers of Jesus were not believers in Jesus as the son of God until after he rose from the grave. We also learned from the Bible and from history that these brothers all became missionaries. They all went out to reach the world with the message of their brother, but also the message of their Savior, the Son of God. We, let's see. We also learned that all of the brothers of Jesus were in the upper room. You, you remember that story in Acts chapter 1? That they were waiting with the apostles Peter, James, John, all those men, they were waiting in this room called the upper room because Jesus told them, wait for the Holy Spirit. Well, guess what? The brothers of Jesus were there already. This is, this is only weeks after the resurrection of Jesus. That tells me he become a Christian, a believer in Christ within weeks after the resurrection. And we also learn that this man had such an influence on Christianity that in Jerusalem, which is where the church began, the first pastor was their brother named James, the oldest boy. But when James was killed later on, they were trying to figure out who needs to be the second pastor. Well, they didn't pick him because he was a missionary but it was such an important decision that guess what? They called the brothers of Jesus, or in other words, the brothers of James, the pastor that was killed. They called these brothers, they came to Jerusalem, and they helped pick the second pastor. We learned this from history, okay? So this man had a high influence in Christianity, okay? So here we go. Let's look at his personality. Now, folks, this was tough. This might have been my hardest answer ever in a tournament because there, you have to dig so much to find information here about Jesus' littlest brothers. But I'm going to say I think his personality that describes him the most 
is wise. I think he was a very wise, wise man, a wise preacher. Here's why I say this. Couple reasons mostly. Can you imagine the stories that he could tell you about the life of Jesus before Jesus become a preacher? Please remember, folks, Jesus uh, didn't begin preaching until he was 30 years old. He only preached for three years. So most of the life of Jesus we don't know about. But guess what? Guess who could tell you? Can you just imagine the wisdom that he gained in those 30 years with Jesus? Now keep in mind, he wasn't a believer in Jesus as the Son of God. But can you imagine the information that he heard? The things he heard Jesus tell him that stuck with him? I believe he was super wise. And we also know, as we said a while ago, he helped pick the second pastor in Jerusalem, a very important place. That tells me he had wisdom. He was a trusted source in the, in the church. Now, who does he compare to? Well, folks, this is another very, very tough question because, boy, there just isn't much information out there on Jesus' littlest brothers. But who would he compare to? Well, some may disagree with me, but I think I would compare him to Peter, the Apostle Peter. I just want you to take a moment, if you will, and notice, notice the two comparisons today, the Apostle Peter and the Apostle Paul. Them were probably the two biggest named people in, in the in the New Testament behind Jesus. Why do I say that he compares to Peter? Well, let me give you a couple reasons. I believe this man was very wise, as we've already said. Very, very smart. I believe Peter was very wise. Can you think about this, folks? That when Jesus died, he gave the apostles the command to go reach the world, didn't he? Where you had to go around the world, tell people about Jesus. Well, do you know, folks, Peter knew things that many others didn't. Can you imagine the personal conversations that he had with Jesus in those three years? Okay. I believe he heard many wonderful things by the Lord. And, and I've already said that Simon could say the same thing. He heard many wonderful things growing up with the Lord. Okay. Also, think about this. Didn't we say that the, the Bible makes it clear the brothers of Jesus were not believers till after the resurrection? That tells me I think Simon probably had a little regret in his heart. I think it probably hurt him a little bit because he probably thought back and said, Wow, why was I such a... Uh, I don't know, a dummy. Why, why didn't I believe in Jesus sooner? He probably felt like he let Jesus down because he never believed in him until after Jesus died. Well, folks, I think he had a little regret. And do you know Peter denied Jesus three times in the Bible? I think Peter had to live the rest of his life with regret. Even though he knew he was forgiven, he always had that memory of how he had let the Lord down. So I think they compared closely to each other. What was Simon's future? Well, this is a pretty easy one. We know that all the brothers of Jesus became missionaries. Okay? They all became missionaries. The Bible even tells us this. Okay? And... Uh, Let's see. Yeah. And if I had to guess, I don't know this for a fact, folks, but if I had to guess, something tells me he was probably martyred at the end of his life. Because we know that his oldest brother James was, and we also know Jesus was, of course, killed. And so I think he probably was martyred. 
But just imagine Simon traveling the world, telling people not only about the ministry of Jesus, how Jesus did miracles, walked on water, and, and most of all rose from the grave, but just think about the stories that Simon could tell people about Jesus' early life. And how Jesus was even before anybody else knew him. Simon could say, I remember Jesus doing this when we were growing up. So wow, what a missionary. What a, what a story he had to tell people. And last of all, folks, what verse could sum up him, his life very well? I had to think very hard. I got to thinking about how Simon probably had regret. Jesus' brother, he probably had regret. Even though he become a believer in Christ and very successful, he all, I think he remembered how he let the Lord down and didn't believe all through the life of Jesus. So I got to thinking and I said, you know what? There is a verse. I'm going to go ahead and write it up here. It's Philippians 3.14. Philippians 3, 14. Because here, here's what I see in Simon. Remember I told you that he must have accepted Jesus as his Savior weeks after the crucifixion. Because he is appearing in the upper room praying with the apostles in the book of Acts. So I see in Simon a man who yet yeah, took a long time for him to accept the Lord. But when he did, he got busy. He hit the ground running. You know, this verse right here says, I press for the prize. In other words, I'm focused, I'm determined, I'm going to do great things. That's what Philippians 3, 14 says. I think that's what Simon, Jesus' brother, did. He hit the ground running. He got busy. He was pressing for the Lord. Pressing for the prize of God. I think it fueled him. I think that regret he had, I think probably gave him motivation to do a lot for the Lord. So folks, I've done everything I can in this video for both men. It's going to be a tough one, but please consider, prayerfully consider, which one inspires you more. And cast your vote for that person, please. And also invite a friend to watch this video. And I hope you've enjoyed this. And remember, on Friday, we have one final video of the second round. Next week, we will end this tournament because there will only be a few videos left for next week. So, folks, hope you enjoyed this. I hope you have a great day, and we'll see you on Friday. Until then, take care, and God bless you.